In this video, we will learn about different ways to iterate over a vector in C++. So first, we will start with range-based for loops. Range-based for loops were introduced in C++ 11. So the idea behind them was to improve the readability. Like here, we can specify the for keyword and inside the bracket, we can just specify auto element. We don't need to specify the element or the type of elements which are in the vector and then colon and the vector name. And the open and close braces. Now inside the braces, we can specify the operations which we want to operate on every element inside the vector. So what this loop will do, it will iterate over all the elements in the vector and for each element, it will specify the value in the in this variable. So we can make it as a reference variable also just to avoid the copy of the elements. Now here we can print the element. So what it will do, it will iterate over all the elements and print each element separated by comma. So now if you execute this example, it printed all the elements in the vector on the console. So this is the range based for loop. This is the first way and we can have an, another way to iterate over the vector using indexing because in this approach we were not aware about the index while iterating so was when we are iterating over the third elements we we knew the value only but we didn't knew the index position of that particular value in those scenarios we can use the indexing okay so what we'll do we will say for int i equal to zero i is less than vector size so what this for loop will do it will iterate over all the elements in the vector starting from index position 0 till index position that's equal to the length of the vector and we can during indexing we can access each element using subscript operator Like here and we can separate each element while printing with a, a comma okay so now we can try running the example again so we will compile the file and let's execute this so it will show it printed all the elements of the vector the console it iterated over each element one by one and printed them on the console so this is the approach using indexing now uh, where is indexing is useful so we can say hey, okay now let's print the index also index i and then value to and here we can print handle so what it will do it will print it will iterate over all the elements of the vector and for each element it will print it index and the value okay now let's execute this so it says that value is 1 at index position 0 similarly value is 8 at the index position 4 so this approach is useful when we want to have the index while iterating over the elements in the vector now the third approach is using iterators so let's move this and we can have an iterator object or let's write the complete thing because if you are using a compiler which does which is not the c++ 11 uh, specific then there can be an errors there can be some errors uh, 
iterator it equals to begin so what begin does begin returns an iterator which points to the first element of the vector now we can start iterating using this iterator till the iterator reaches the end of the vector and the end function in the vector returns an iterator that points to the end of the vector now inside the while loop we can perform any operation on the vector like printing the value so we need and we can separate each value with a comma and then we need to increment the iterator so that it can point to the next element after the one iteration okay so if let's clear the console if we execute this example it will print all the elements of the vector on the console so what it does it iterated over all the elements using an iterator we can improve this by using auto it will give the same result so this was the third way for iterating over a vector now what if we want to iterate over a vector in a single line and apply a lambda function on each of the element well we can do that using an STL algorithm std4h for that first we need to include the algorithm okay now we can use for each and here we can pass the iterator pointing to the start of the vector second element we can pass the end iterator now as a third element we can we need to pass a lambda function that will be applied on each element of the vector while iteration now inside the lambda function we can have this auto ampersand element and open and close bracket now here we can print it okay now let's try this example if we try to execute this So it iterated over all the elements in the vector and printed each value. Now, instead of printing every value, we can perform any other operation. Like suppose we want to have the sum of all elements in the vector. Then we, what we can do, we can specify here int sum equals to zero. And then here we need, okay, semicolon. And there we need to add each value in the vector while iteration to the sum variable for that we need to what we need to do sum equal to element but this is a lambda function how sum will be available inside this lambda function for that we need to pass the sum as a reference variable in the lambda function now in the end you can say total and now let's try to execute this example so it says total is 32 so so we can iterate over a vector using different techniques and then during iteration we can perform anything like we can calculate some we can print them we can perform any other operation on them Thanks for watching and do subscribe our channel for more videos like this.